In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4, we find our foundational text for this new series in looking at verses number 11 and 12. And it reads as follows. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Church, I'm teaching from the Word of God. From the life-building, life-blessing, and life-changing series. And this is a new series, and it is entitled, The Work of the Ministry. Can you say that with me? The Work of the Ministry. Now this is lesson number one. And lesson number one subtitle is Perfecting the Saints. Perfecting the Saints. Uh, let's look at this text. We're going to exegete the text. It means that we're going to correctly interpret it. We're going to break it down. We're going to take it word by word, line by line, precept by precept. Look again at verse number 11. And it says, And he gave some. That he there relates to Jesus Christ. Uh, if you don't believe me, you can study it out on your own. All you have to do is uh, look and read that whole fourth chapter of Ephesians. When we read the Bible, when we read the living word of God, we have to remember context. If you want to understand the text, you have to read pretext and post-text. Pretext, the text, and post text will equal context. Somebody say amen. Amen. In other words, you don't want to take something out of context. And if you read the whole fourth chapter, you'll find out that it says, I believe in verse 6, it says, and he gave gifts unto men, and that he was Jesus Christ. Okay? And now in verse 11, it says, and he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. Now, to be honest with you, theologically, uh, some churches call this the five-fold ministry. And some churches call it the four-fold ministry. The reason for the difference is because of the last office, pastors and teachers. Some people believe it's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And pastors and teachers are two offices. Some people believe it's uh, just four, and pastors and teachers are one office. What do I believe? I believe it's fourfold. And the reason I believe it's fourfold is because a pastor, is, a pastor teacher is actually one office and two functions. And we're going to talk about that today. A pastor teacher is one office and two functions. In other words, a pastor is a shepherd and a teacher. And if a pastor's not teaching, he's not doing too much of a good job. Can I get an amen? Amen. In fact, that's really one of the problems in the church today. Uh, there is, there's a need for preaching and teaching. Uh, there's a need for inspiration. There's a need for information. But at the end of the day, what we really need is transformation. Can I get an amen? amen. But what we need to do is to be changed. And the scripture says, in all thy getting, get what? Understanding. understanding. So if, 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 if you can understand while somebody's hooping, then praise the Lord, no problem. I mean, I like preaching. Preaching is good. Preaching, preaching is, is good for inspiration. It can exhort you, and that's good. But at the end of the day, you really do need some understanding, and one of perhaps my strongest spiritual gifts is teaching. Teaching. Uh, I'm a teacher of the gospel, and I want you to understand it for yourself so that when the test of life comes and the devil comes to pump you and say, you, 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 you're not a child of God. When the devil comes to pump you and say, now, you know you sin. You can come back to the devil and say, yeah, but I know the word. And the word says that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And, I, and the blood has already covered all my sins, past, present, and future. Now, if I fail short, I can go to God. I can repent of my sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You need to know that. Now, that's a very important point I just made. Because how many Christians are still walking around saying, well, you know, uh, I, I, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. 
I, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. You know what's wrong with that statement? It's false. You're not a listen. You're not a sinner anymore. You you you, you were a sinner. You've been saved by grace. That's almost like saying you're not saved. You were a sinner. You've been saved by grace through faith. Who you are now, you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. And if you get an understanding of that, then perhaps you'll start acting like it. Let's give God some praise. But you really start acting. Listen, once you understand that you once you understand that you are a child of the king, you start acting like it. Now it takes a little while. Oh. I, that's good. We were, uh, I was giving this example at TBN. We were at TBN and I was giving an example about this and, uh, you know, doing what I usually do, which is when I think about something, I do it right away. When I think about something, I do it right away. Yeah. You know what I found out about that, Minister Martha? That I've been getting all these insights. What I found out about that is that I've been right all the time because the Bible says, now faith is. If you are operating in faith, then you have to operate in that. See, that, see, remember when God tells you to do something and he said, he could, see, God lives in the eternal now. That's who he is. Somebody say, now. So, 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 so when God tells you to do something, he, he may not express it explicitly to you, but he means now. When he speaks up to your heart, he means now, if you hang around past long enough and I ask you to do something, what do I mean? Yeah. Now. And so when God talks to me, when God talks to me, I'm just being honest with you. When God, she knows you better than anybody, so she knows. When God talks to me, I do it right now. Because, and I found out it has really good natural benefits. Because when you don't do it right now, you know, you forget. Come on now. Y'all don't be looking at me like, like you. Stuff slips through the cracks when you don't do it right now. In fact, you even have a safety valve when you when God speaks to you in like, for example, I'll give you the example I was just going to give you. If you're in the car or something and you can't actually do the thing right now, there's always some way to capture it right now. You know, I can, I can uh, without breaking the law, I can do a voice command on my phone and I can send a text or I can send a voice message to myself and I can say, do such and such and such. Now, I haven't done the physical thing, but it's as good as it's been done right now. Somebody say, faith is now. Faith is now. Yeah, everything about God is, is now. Faith. He doesn't live in the past. He doesn't live in the future. He's now. And when we got to we gotta start realizing faith, if you really want to walk in faith, it's now. Amen. When God telling you to do something, somebody say, turn it in and say, do it now. Do it now. He, he, and watch this. The first step to doing it now is either speaking it or writing it. If you want to obey God, and when he tells you to do something, honey, you better do Because faith without works is dead. There has to be an act of faith. There has to be some action. Speak it or write it or both. And then you're on the way to doing it. It's as good as done because faith is what? Now. I don't know who that was for, but praise God. Let's give God some praise. No extra charge for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, now listen, listen. So the example I was given was I was going to TBN, and we were in the car, and Sister Ave was with me, and Sister Lottie was with me, and who else was in there? Who else was in the car? Sister Johnson. And I was explaining to them about what I'm telling you about, to, to understand who you are in Christ. And because I operate in the now, and I was driving, and I didn't want nobody to get into a wreck, and I didn't want to be trying to Google while I was driving, I made Lottie my secretary, and I said, Lottie, uh, Sister Lottie, Google, Google this. I said, Google uh, the, the royals and how the book of the royals, how do they operate? Because I was trying to give them an example, and I said, here's the, here's the point. When you come into the kingdom of God, Amen. you become royalty. Yes. You are royalty. Right, yes. The problem is you don't know how to act like royalty. <laughs> But you is royalty. Yeah. That's that thing. So I told her, I said, let's get a natural example. I said, Google, Google the royals. And she Googled it for me. And now I haven't studied it all out, but it's on my computer. And what she found out is there's, called, there's something called uh, the Articles of Royalty or Royal Articles. In other words, there's a book for how to be royal. You understand? The royals don't, I mean, they, listen, if you're like one of those people, 
Sometimes you get married into it. Sometimes you get born into it. We got adopted into it, right? right. Somebody say, I'm adopted and I'm glad of it. Now, now, you've been adopted. I'm going to give y'all all, give all, give all my good stuff from this week. Huh? Y'all want the overflow? Yeah. This ain't on the page. This is the overflow. Okay. You've been adopted into the family of God. That means you are a son of the king, right? You, you have inherited all that God is, all that God has, all that God wants you to have. And, 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 and all you have to do now is to start finding out how to behave as a prince, as a princess, as a son of the Most High. That's all you do. And, and this Bible, this is the Articles of Royalty right here. Right here. This is it right here. Let's give God some praise. This will tell you. Do you know that, do you know that when the president goes over there, he got to learn what it's like? To, to be in the presence of royalty, he doesn't even know. Because we don't have royals here. But when he goes over there, they say, Mr. President, when the queen comes, you know, you got to do this, you bow this way, and then you got to use this for it, you got to do this, you got to do that. Because why? You have to learn how to be royalty. Yes. 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 Somebody say, I'm learning how to be royalty. I'm learning how to be royalty. I was, I was with somebody, now here's, here's what I was going to give you. I was with somebody yesterday, and they were talking all about, you know, what you have inherited uh, because you are a child of the king, and they would it kind of sound like a lot of this material uh, prosperity stuff. They were talking about, and you're, you know, and, I, and you say this, I'm a millionaire, and I'm a millionaire, da, 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 all this millionaire stuff. And you know, Pastor, as soon as I hear that, I start thinking about true prosperity, right? And, and, and in an instant, I had a moment, and I had a spiritual uh, perception, I had a spiritual revelation. And when the woman said, say I'm a millionaire, say I'm a millionaire, the Spirit of God spoke to me, and I said, yeah, I'm a millionaire. M-I-L-L-I-O-N-H-E-I-R. I'm a millionaire. I'm a multi-millionaire. I'm an heir of the child. See, 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 see. The, did you get it? And I wrote it down. And I sent it to myself right in there. I'm a mill. See, I'm a Romans chapter 8, verse 16 says, My his spirit bears witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God. And if a child of God, then I'm an heir. I have a right to all that God has. And everything God has ain't just money, honey. He got faith.